Welcome back to Engineering Simplified. In this video and possibly the next couple of videos, we are going to be talking about the inverse kinematics of a 6 degree of freedom industrial robot. It is a general industrial robot that you see in industries for manufacturing and other operations. Before we move on to the inverse kinematics, let us quickly revise what do we mean by the degrees of freedom of a robot. So when we say that a robot is a 6 degree of freedom robot, we mean that it has got 6 independently controlled joints or it has got 6 motors or actuators which we can independently control. Now I have got this robot right here which we are going to work on for this video and the next couple of videos and we are going to start from the very basic and go all the way up to the inverse kinematics. So we have got a robot which is made by the company ABB Robotics and the robot name is IRB120 and it is quite a common robot. And I have got this picture directly from the product specification manual. And from where I got the picture it also said that the robot that is currently shown is in home configuration which means that all the joint angles are zero. So we can see that there are six joints let me mark them out. So this is the first joint. This one. Then there is this second joint. This one. Then there is this third joint which can make it rotate in this direction. Then there is this fourth which can make it swivel around. Then there is this fifth which can make it move up or down. And the sixth is going to just rotate it about this point. So it is a 6 degree of freedom robot, it has got 6 motors and the position that we see it currently, it is in home configuration. So now what is inverse kinematics? So in inverse kinematics, you are given the end effector position and orientation and you have to determine the joint parameters. In this case, what angles of the motors would you like, what, what commands would you need to give the motors in order to make the robot go to a certain position with a certain orientation. You can think of it this way like if you have a pick and place operation in an industry and you have this robot right here and the object that it needs to pick is right here. So you would know the position of the object with respect to some reference frame let's say with respect to this reference frame x y and z. So we can say that this object is some units in X, some units in Y, some units in Z. So we know the position of the object and we know that in order to pick the object, the robot needs to approach it in this direction from this orientation. So now we know the position and the orientation. Now we would need to move backwards and figure out what motor commands do we need to give to the motors, what angles should be the motors at in order to achieve this position and orientation and pick the object. So in the question that we have today, we are given this homogeneous transform and we have to figure out the joint parameters. Just to quickly recall what does a homogeneous transform represent? The homogeneous transformation basically represents two things. We can state it shortly in this form. So the bottom row is always three zeros and a one and the first three cross three matrix is the orientation matrix which is this the orientation and this the last three cross one vector is the displacement vector or the position vector. So right here this one right here is the sorry not this one but this one right here is the position. So this shows me the x, y and z coordinates of the location that the robot needs to be, the end effector of the robot. And this tells us the orientation. So how do we proceed with the inverse kinematics? But before we proceed with inverse kinematics, we need to understand when someone has given us this inverse kinematics homogeneous transform, they have defined a reference frame frame in which they have defined these x, y and z coordinates as well as the orientation. So there are two reference frames of importance. The first is a base frame and the second is the end effector frame. So right here, this one is my base frame. 
or I can or often it is also called word frame. They may or may not be the same, but for this question, we are assuming them to be the same base frame or word frame. So what we are doing is the x, y, z coordinates are defined with respect to the base frame, the word frame. So some units in x, some units in y, some units in z. And this is my end effective frame. So I need this frame, end effective frame to move to this x, y, z coordinate and at this orientation. Now from the product specification menu, I have picked out this chart which just shows you how much the motors can rotate in every direction and since it is a physical robot it makes sense that the motors cannot rotate equally in all directions due to physical constraint. So how do we go about inverse kinematics? There are four basic steps that we need to do. The first being we need to define the base frame and the end effective frame which in this case I have already defined the base frame and the end effective frame. Secondly, we need to write out the forward kinematics. Thirdly, we equate the forward kinematics to the forward kinematic values, which is this, this matrix right here. So we write the forward kinematics ourselves and we equate it to this homogeneous transform. And then we solve it for the joint parameters by employing a few clever tricks. And what would the joint parameters be in this case? The joint parameters would be my theta angles from theta 1 all the way to theta 6. Since this video is becoming too long, I'm going to cut it right now and see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.